and we're live. Hey everybody, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos the YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo and today is Friday, February 19th. Welcome in and happy Friday everyone. I see that John is already in here and said hello. Welcome into John. I'm gonna welcome in and Woo! amateur mistake. <laughs> welcome into the amateur hour here at the Flippin' Hippos. Um, today is Friday so I'm always a little goofy on Friday and making mistakes. I make mistakes every day. But Fridays are expressly for <laughs> being tired and making tons of mistakes. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit while we wait for some folks to get in before we dive into the bag I have here. Um, I have another bag just like I had last week. So it's about yay high. It's full of wash. We'll go through it. If I don't get through the whole bag in an hour, um, I'll get through as much as I can. If I get through the bag and it hasn't been an hour, then the show will be just be a little bit shorter than usual. And um, while we wait for folks to get in, I have a couple of things to say to you all. Guess what happened this week? I didn't even notice it when it happened. It had to be brought to my attention. Um, I, okay, first of all, I'm super behind on YouTube comments. So if you've left comments on the YouTube channel and you're waiting for um, an answer to a question or you're just waiting for me to acknowledge you and say, hey, yeah, thanks for commenting. I'm going to get around to it this weekend. I am really behind on YouTube comments. Um, I'm a little behind on emails, not as bad, but I'm going to catch up on emails this weekend as well. Um, I'm not as behind on those, but I am behind. If you've sent me messages on Facebook or Instagram, um, the word behind doesn't do justice to that. <laughs> I don't get notifications at all on Facebook if you send me a message, um, unless we're friends. And I don't, um, there's no nice way to say this. I don't friend people on Facebook unless I'm actually a friend with you and that's not to say I don't love you guys and I don't like you guys as human beings and if I ever met you at EBA Open I wouldn't go out to lunch with you or go out for drinks with you and we wouldn't get along and I wouldn't say hey you're my friend I'm not saying that but unless I actually know you in real life and hang out with you um, I'm I don't friend people on Facebook my friends list is very short it's people I actually know in real life and my Facebook uh, personal page is very locked down. It's very private. And I, that's for reasons. Um, I know a lot of people that um, are personalities or influencers or whatever you want to call us. Friend anybody and everybody. And they have every single person that's a reseller as a friend on Facebook. And they have kind of like a public profile and they're friends with everybody. That's just not what I choose to do. I choose to have my personal Face, Facebook page as a personal page. So it's just folks for real life and it's very private. So um, if you message me on Facebook and we're not actually connected as friends on Facebook, I don't get a notification. I actually literally have to go in specifically to my messages and go into where they have the requests set for folks who aren't my friends um, and look for them. And I literally forget to do that all the time because there's nowhere that I'm notified. I have to go out of my way through several screens to look for the requests. And I try to remember to do it. I try to make myself a note in my bullet journal at least like once every weekend or two to just kind of go through those requests and see what um, if I have any pending requests sitting there because um, I literally get no notifications at all ever, which is why I constantly tell people, please, if you need me, if it's time sensitive, if you need... Uh, question answered or you need something right away go in my Facebook group make sure you're a member there here I'll even link it right now it is a free group to join and if you're a member and you go in there and you have a time sensitive question or you need my attention or you need something right away you can create a post and you can tag me in it and you can get an answer within an hour or two and usually faster than that because I do get notifications when new posts are put up in the group and when I'm tagged in the group. Both. I get them on my phone. So if you tag me in the group, I will get a notification. I also check in in the group 
uh, once every two hours or so. I take a break from work and check in just to see that everything's going fine and that I'm not tagged anywhere. So if you need me um, and you have like a time sensitive question or whatever, um, go into the Facebook group, make a post and tag me and I'll get back to you like really fast. If you send me a Facebook message, you might wait <laughs> like three or four weeks because I will never get notified that that's sitting there. And um, by the time I remember to go seek out those requests, and it's the same with Instagram. Um, Instagram, I do not get any notifications that I have pending messages over there. It's just by the off chance that I will go check them out. Um, I did get one last night during like Casey's live show, but it's from an actual friend on Facebook who sent me a message on Facebook and said, go check your, I sent you a message on Instagram. I know you don't get notified, but I need you to go look. Um, so here's the thing. I don't even know where my point was going with this. Oh yeah. So don't message me unless you're willing to wait. If you're patient, if you need something right away, Facebook group is the way to go. If you're patient and you want to wait a month, you could absolutely send me a message. Um, it's nothing personal if you're not my friend on Facebook. It means nothing. It's nothing personal. I like you guys. You guys are all great. I love interacting with you in the group. I just leave my Facebook uh, personal page for, like, actual family and, like, people I know in real life um, outside of the reselling. Um, so don't, don't be offended if we're not friends. It doesn't mean we're not friends. It just means I don't know you in real life. Um, also, if you email me, I do tend to stay on top of that. Um, I can get behind on that, but I'm pretty good at keeping up on emails, but I do answer first and, um, first end. Um, so if you email me on Monday and you don't get a response, um, right away on Monday and Tuesday rolls around, I'm probably going to get around to you on Tuesday, but if you send a second message on Tuesday, cause you're getting antsy, um, you're going to get pushed down. Does that make sense? So um, what will happen is if you send a second message, your message looks like it came in on Tuesday. So anybody else that came in, um, if your message came in here on Monday, anybody else that came in after you, you're going to look like you came in after them. So you're going to get pushed out in the queue, so to speak. So don't send multiple emails because um, you're getting antsy because it will just push you down in the queue. Just kind of wait your wait. Unless you're really go back. If, if you're really antsy, we'll go back to that. If it's time sensitive, go in the group. Tag me there. Um, and then YouTube comments. I get behind on those all the time. I do eventually answer all of them and comment on most of them. Um, it's usually on the weekends I get caught up on those. That all said, I'm so behind on YouTube right now on the comments, I hadn't even noticed, and someone had to bring it to my attention, and guess what happened this weekend, this week? I reached 8,000 subscribers, guys, so thank you so, so much to all of you that are subscribed to the channel, that have shared the channel with your friends, and all of the people that you interact with in the reselling community, if you've ever shared us on Instagram or other places in the social media atmosphere, everybody that's in the Facebook group, um, if you've ever talked about me um, or my channel or shared me anywhere, um, all of you, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I'm probably going to be doing something special in the Facebook group to celebrate this weekend. I'm going to give away a plush guide, I think. So um, thank you guys so, so much. I'm real excited. I didn't even realize it. We were well over. We're already at like 8,012 before someone told me. So thank you so much. All right, let me um, look at the chat real quick, and then we'll just get into the plush. Um, happy Friday, Lisa. Welcome in, Rhonda and Amelia, Ivy. Um, John is listing plush. I just got done a two and a half hour photo session with my plush friends before I came on today. Hi, Nadia. Welcome in. Pame is listing a Squishmallow. Those are so cute. They're like the cutest plush. Um, hey, Pete is in the middle of the first full photo session since March. Whoa. Congratulations. Wish you all the endurance. Um, CS is here from Joshua Tree, California. 
and lots of congratulations on the 8,000. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Megan says I'm her fave. Well, thank you so much. Um, I did have some puffkins like years ago, but I haven't had any. I haven't seen any lately. I have not come across any. All right, let's get into this bag. If you guys have any questions along the way um, about any plush in general or anything you see in the video. Oh, her hair. Her poor hair. Look at her. Oh, poor baby. All right, she's a Build-A-Bear, which is exciting. Um, this is uh, the, the What's-Her-Head. I have sold so many of her, and her name is totally brain farting right now. Uh, this is not, is this Twilight Sparkle? Um, anyway, these big My Little Ponies from Build-A-Bear. Um, depending on the character, I usually put them up for 20 plus calculated shipping because they usually weigh a bit. Um, or 25 plus calculated shipping, depending on the popularity of the character. Um, and they usually have their little My Little Pony tag as well. But her hair. So, you guys want some tips about some My Little Pony hair while we're here? She's got... She's got, she's got like, a. this girl has some issues. She's even got a bracelet stuck in her hair. Poor girl. Um, so some folks swear by just regular conditioner. Rainbow Dash, thank you so much. I don't know why I called her Twilight Sparkle. This is Rainbow Dash. I had a total brain fart. Um, some people use, like, the regular hair, hair conditioner we would use in our own hair. Um, and just, like, soak it. Um, and the hair or like in warm water mixed with it and then try to comb it through some folks will use fabric softener with a little bit of water and just like um, Like you put it in a sink I guess or like a tub like a Tupperware thing you do and just soak it um, I've always just done the fabric softener. I've never tried um, regular hair conditioner. I've always just put like um, This is really bad so I'm probably would use like a full cap full because her tail too. Um, I would probably put like a maybe half a cap to start in warm water until it dissolved and like a I would use like a square dish a Tupperware and just try to get her head in there and let it soak overnight and then try to comb it out um, and then I would rinse it with cold water and let it air dry and see what happened and then the same with the tail. But you can try conditioner or fabric softener. I've seen people say both work. If it's not this bad, some people will spray it on, like put it in a spray bottle. But I mean, this is really bad. You can see that there's no way just spraying it on is going to get a comb through that. That's going to have to soak. Poor baby. Poor Rainbow Dash. But here's a cute meerkat. This is a uh, Thai Beanie Boo. This is the Thai silk. Come on, camera focus. There you go. It's got the big eyes. This has this has a lot of damage going on. Um, that's a lot of damage. I don't even know if the the Novu, the scratchy stuffy, <laughs> the scratchy stuffy, the stuff Robert recommends. Um, this is like some deep damage. I don't know. I might try it. I might try it. But this looks like some deep scarring. I don't know. I might try it. it the Novu has that three-step process. And um, I've never tried it before. I'm going to order some just to try. Um, Robert says most of the plushies only take the two steps. The three steps is for, like, really bad scratches. I think this guy. Boy, okay, you guys, we're zero for two. I've got two sad plush that need some attention today. Okay, here's somebody that's good to go. This is a gun. Um, looks like he came from a chocolate shop. So he probably might have originally had chocolates with him. Like maybe um, for Valentine's Day or... Um, Something like that. I'm just trying to see if he had a date. 
I don't see a date on him. He's really soft and cute. Um, Ghirardelli chocolates. Those are good. Y'all ever had those chocolates? Yum, yum. So this is just a little teddy pair. And then we have, um, what's his name? From Secret Life of Pets. Totes forgot his name. If anybody remembers his name, let me know. Totally forgot. Um, if you ever have something like this and you can't remember their name, when they're common enough like this, you could literally just Google or go on eBay and put Secret Life of Pets dog. And it's so super easy to find their name because they're going to pop up right away on a search. Something like this dog is popular and common enough that he's going to come right up. This is like the main character from that movie. Um, this is from Spin Master. Spin Master makes a lot of plush from movies and Nickelodeon, like Dick Jr. He's an electronic guy. Um, so he's going to have to go in my pile of um, people. People? These are people now. Max, thank you. Max. Um, these are people. And so <laughs> he's going to go in the pile with the other people. Now, I have a pile. Um, I've told you guys this before. I The ones I have to test, I put them in a pile until the pile is big enough that I can spend um, like an hour, hour and a half, the length of a movie. <laughs> I'll sit down on a Saturday with my pile, a screwdriver, and a pile of batteries, and I'll just test all my electronic plush. Um, the ones that don't work, yes, I do still sell. I just notate in the listing that they no longer work, and I sell them for obviously a lot cheaper than they would sell had they worked. The ones that do work, I um, notate in the listing that they do work. They require X amount of this kind of battery not included. I never send batteries. So he has to go with the other pee pals. Um, at what point do you decide it's too much work? Um, I think that kind of, I don't know that I can just answer that because it would really depend on the plush. Like that meerkat, um, if I tried the Novu and it didn't work, I would just list him as is, I guess. But if I comped him and he's already selling for 12, he's not worth it. Um, but, like, if it was a $50 Build-A-Bear and it had a lot of damage, I could list it still at 20 maybe. I don't know. It would really depend. Um, it would depend on what the damage was, how long it would take me to fix it, what kind of mood I'm in. Is it a Saturday? Can I sit in front of the TV and work on it? Is it the middle of the week and I'm super busy and I just don't freaking feel like it? You know, I can just throw up my Goodwill box out there. I don't know. It kind of just varies on my mood, what it is, what the damage is. Yeah, there's just too many variables. Um... Because, like, a tear is a lot different than damaged eyes. You can disclose things and lower the price. Um, depends on the character, the comps, all kinds of things. It also depends on my mood. I mean, I've been known to just look at something like that and be, like, right in the Goodwill box. And then some days I'm like, well, maybe I'll try. I don't know. Um, my test pile is getting pretty big. Yeah, I, I don't particularly like testing them. That's why I save them up in a pile. But I don't mind it because I, no, I do mind it. I don't like it. <laughs> but when I save them up and I can sit in front, I sit right at the same table I record on. Um, this is my laptop right here. I sit right here in front of this very laptop and I put a movie on it. And I just have a chair here. I put two chairs here. And then I put working and not working, and I have my pile of um, screwdriver, batteries, a drink, maybe a snack even, and work. I don't mind doing anything if I can watch a movie while I do it or listen to true crime or something. Um, this is Curdo Toy, Custom Plush Toys. Um... He's not a person. He's not a people. He doesn't have to go in the people pile. <laughs> Isn't he cute? 
Oh, speaking of people piles, that Elmo last week that would not shut up, he kept talking to me all week. He's over there in the pile. And I don't know if the other plush on top of him are shifting their weight or whatever. Um, he kept talking, and then he wouldn't stop. And, um, oh, my God, Keith and I got a huge laugh out of it. He's really cute. Um, but it was cute for, like, two days. It was like, ha, 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 there's Elmo again. And midweek, I was cussing out Elmo, you guys. I was like, shut up, Elmo. Um, so eventually, I took that little box out of him again. I left Elmo in the pile, and his box is over here on the table because I'm not I'm not dealing with it anymore. I am done with Elmo. <laughs> this is Hippity. He is a Beanie Buddy collection. So these Beanie Buddies can be worth money. It just depends. Yeah, here, let me just show you his ear because that's... I have absolutely no depth perception. Sorry, guys. And then I'm going to show you my finger. So, um, welcome to Amateur Hour yet again. I'm going to show you that because I can clearly show you that. Oh, Megan found the lamb chop. She must have remembered the story about the giant life-size lamb chop with the squeaker in it. We found it at the, the bins. This is a cute bunny. I want to get this up right away because Easter is so... Well, it's in April this year, but it's not too far away. I want to put you where I want to take your picture tomorrow, Easter Bunny. St. Patrick's Day is the next holiday, guys. So in the next couple of days, go through your listings and make sure if you have anything that's St. Patrick's Day related, plush or not, scrub tops, anything like that, double check your listings, your titles and your keywords, and maybe raise the price a couple bucks and uh, get your... St. Patty's Day stuff to sell. And then once that's over, you can double check all your Easter stuff. Little unicorn. Unicorns sell well regardless. I mean, this was a Beanie Buddy as well. This is the 100% silk. But unicorns do well. They're one of those types of animals that everybody loves. Here's another people. This will have to go in the people pile. Looks like it. Oh, it works. It's going to walk right off the table. <laughs> oh, how cute. How cute is this? Hi, PT. I'm just playing with my unicorn. It has a leash. Oh, my God. I thought it was walking. There it goes. All right. We're not here to watch Star Play with Toys, are we? Are we? Maybe we are. Anyway, the unicorn works. So cute. So that can be photographed and listed. Isn't it cute? It walks and it wags its tail. Sounds like a horse. I, I mean... I would ask you guys, do unicorns really sound like a horse? But I guess nobody knew, really knows, right? Because we don't even know if they're real. They could have been real. They could be extinct. They could have been real. It's party time. American greetings. Um, this is a dog. I've never had an American greetings. I've had tons of Hallmark, but never an American greetings dog. So I'm going to guess he's probably a $14, $15 dog. I'll either be pleasantly surprised and he'll be more or a bunch of turds sell him for $2 free ship and include a $20 bill in the envelope for you. All right. So this, that's sarcasm in case anybody's new. Um, I like to, I like to be sarcastic about the turds who like to price things too cheaply. Um, Oh, wow, PT's getting the Goodwill plush boxes. You're welcome. Robert introduced me to them. So, thank Robert. Um, this guy doesn't have a brand, but he's super cute. I actually have been listing a lot of my plushies that didn't have brands lately. I just make up prices. I just do what I want based on size and the animal it is and how cute it is. And sometimes you can find them on eBay like yours. And if not, make up a price. 
I don't really don't see a, a size on him. Now, when I take a close up photo of the tag under the photo lights and upload it to eBay, I might see a brand that I can't see with my eyes. Um, but this is something I'd probably list for like 16 or 18 bucks. He's a pretty good size. He's got a cute scarf. He's a polar bear. He's shaggy. He's cute. I really want to play with my unicorn some more. Just so you guys know. Just so you guys know that I really am a 12-year-old kid inside. I want to play with that unicorn some more. <laughs> All right, and a peekaboo toy. I mean, these are decent bread and butter, the peekaboos. Some of the peekaboos, depending on the animal, um, like this white tiger is probably not as saturated as like bears and dogs and stuff. It is a bigger size, as you can see. He's pretty long. So he might he might be like a fifteen sixteen dollar tiger. He's got blue eyes. I just took a picture today during my photo session of a um, orange and black like a normal not a normal you're not abnormal I'm sure like he's not normal of a orange and black tiger that was probably about that big. So and yes I do talk to my plush. And I don't feel bad about it, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Hi, Jacqueline's. Welcome in. Jacqueline's One Stop Shop. We are doing great, except that we're cold here. This is a Build-A-Bear. Got its little thing on the paw. It's a rabbit. So I want to get this up. I've been trying to pull all of my, um, oh, I'll probably list that. I probably, honestly, y'all, I probably won't even comp this. I'm probably, um, I would normally probably list this rabbit for around 18. Um, being that Easter is in a couple months, I'm probably going to put it up for 20 with best offer on it. Just because um, Easter's close and I'm going to use Easter Bunny, Rabbit, Spring, all those good keywords. Um, so I'm probably not even going to comp it, to be honest. And I've been trying to pull all my bunnies and stuff oh, out. So this that works. My hand is purple. So these interactive baby toys do really well. I know I talked about that before because I had one of these in one of my haul videos recently. Um, the leapfrog ones do especially well, but these do good too. Um, you want to use interactive, toy, infant, baby, all those good keywords. These do well. Make sure you weigh them um, so you're not getting um, screwed over. I guess I can say that. <laughs> I'm censoring myself. Just make sure you weigh them. If they weigh like a pound on their own, you know they're going to go in a box. I like to put calculated shipping on them um, and not do the free shipping because... I just don't want to be surprised when someone in California buys it because um, we're on one side of the country. But Or you can just, you know, build 8 or 10 bucks into the price if you want to offer free shipping. But make sure you know full well going in if she's going to weigh a pound or more and go in a box. I've got a little lamb. My name's not Mary, though. Star had a little lamb. This is a Beanie Baby. This is Fleece. This is probably going to comp around 5 bucks, But I don't want to list it under 12 because I hate listing anything under 12 Um, I'm probably going to put this up for 12 Free ship. And I'm going to put Spring and some good keywords and maybe even Easter. Some people do associate lambs with Easter. So if I put this in for Easter, Spring, da 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 12 free shot. See what happens. Um, I'll comp it just to be sure. But this is Elmo. This is not a talking Elmo. This is by Tycho. I wonder if this has a year. Um, I don't see a year. But it's just a little Elmo. Probably like 12, 14 bucks. Probably like 12 bucks. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up while you're watching, guys. It does help the channel. Um, it helps the algorithm. 
just like we do things for Cassini on eBay, the thumbs up on YouTube helps this algorithm. This is a tie. Aw, meanie baby. This is spotty. He's probably just another one that's going to comp really low, and I'll put up for, t like, 12. And then eventually he'll be, like, 10. Remember, guys, I got these um, from Bill and Dave. They actually were trying to give them to me. <laughs> you want all our plush? And I'm like, no. So I gave them 50 cents a piece. So some of these, um, I should have given them more. Some of these were really nice. But they were just trying to get rid of their plush inventory. So this guy's super, super cute. Who is he? He is a Beverly Hills Teddy Bear Company. Oh, see... I am such a professional YouTuber with my 8,000 subs. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just Beverly Hills. I've never heard of them, so we'll see what happens. I have this lady that likes all of my plushes but doesn't buy anything. Um, so the thing with watchers on eBay, I feel like they don't mean anything, personally. Um, watchers typically... Are going to be other sellers who are watching your stuff to see if they sell at the price you listed it at. They're curious. They might have something similar. I've always felt that watchers are almost always going to be other sellers or they're window shoppers. So if they're not other sellers watching your stuff just to see, oh, look at what she priced that at. Let me see if it sells for that to see if I can list mine for that. They're window shoppers. They're people who like what you have and would like to have it for themselves but have no intention of ever buying it. And there was there was a thread about this in the Facebook group the other week. And someone actually said that, that there's things that they like and covet that they have watched so that they can intentionally go back and look at them to drool over them, so to speak, but they have no intention of ever buying them because they can't justify the cost or the purchase for themselves. So they're window watchers and other shopper or other sellers. Um, watchers mean absolutely zip zero zilch nada. It's not Poshmark. Likes on Poshmark means something. So I don't think they mean anything. Um, and if you have one person that's liking all your plushies, I would be really curious if that wasn't another seller. Just watching to see what you saw yours for. I just sold the croaking frog I thought was poop, but I sold it full price. Well, that's good. Sometimes poop, sometimes what we think is poop isn't. It's really funny. And sometimes what we think we find that is treasure turns out to be poop. I have a little dandy unicorn that is super stinking cute. Look at her little eyeballs with her eyelashes. Oh, my goodness. This is a little stinking diva cuteness. This is the cutest unicorn ever. Cute unicorns. Cute unicorns. Oh my goodness. Oh, how cute this bear. Look at the little hearts. Has no tags. But it's cute with the right keywords and really good pictures. He'll do fine. He's like a twelve dollar bear, but still. I got a Boyd's bear. This is Bruce. Remember what I told you guys when I first started selling plush and I had a couple of these Boyd's bears? I thought someone wrote on their Boyd's bear. No, that's the name of the bear. It looks like someone wrote, but that's the name of the Boyd's bear you have. And they almost always still have these attached. Almost always. Because these are more of a collector's item than, a, than um, kids' toys. So this is Bruce. Bruce is from the Archive Collection. And he's got himself a little sweater. And him is cute. Yeah, 
yes, I do still send offers to watchers several times a day. Um, doesn't hurt. I make a couple sales off of it. Um, it takes it takes literal seconds. So I do it in bulk. I go on the computer and I do the bulk send out. Um, ten percent off once in the morning, a couple times in the afternoon, a couple times in the evening, maybe. Just whenever I'm on the computer and I think about it. A diva corn. Um, yeah, pretty much any time I'm going to be doing... I do Poshmark and eBay several times a day. Oh, you just sold Bruce? Bruce is cute. My phone is just blowing up. I think I heard an eBay. Did I hear an eBay noise or no? Oh, it was just for you. Okay. I got a Mickey Mouse... Oh, uh, it looks like Mickey Mouse was chewed on by another mouse. And he looked chewed on. This Mickey Mouse looks like he has seen some better days in his life. He's got chew marks. He's dirty. He's Disney baby. Um, I'm going to put him over here. I'm going to spray him down with Awesome. He's Disney Baby. Oh, I guess I should have showed you the bag. So you guys can see what Disney Baby tags look like. And you can hear that. Disney Baby toy. Oh, his ears chew too. I don't know. He might have to be thrown away or, um, as a defect or just read. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to try to save him. Anyway, Disney Baby usually has crinkly noises or rattles, stuff for babies to do. But the more I look at him, I was going to say I was just going to, like, liberally just hose him down with some awesome and try to clean him up. Um, but he's got chew marks and, yeah. Bye. Maybe, maybe he's going to stall me on some. All right. Oh, you guys, we have another... Fruity, fruity, cutito, frutito. <laughs> we have another cutito, frutito without his burrito. So he is a frutito, cutito, frutito without a burrito. But he's super cutito. He's got an orange pepper. He has no scent. But I think he's a sloth. Hey, good afternoon, Lisa. Welcome in. We're looking at a cutito for Tito. You guys have no idea how much I love saying that. It drives Keith nuts. Cutito for Tito. This guy is a Genera plush. No brand whatsoever, but goodness, look at that face. So when I list generic plush, I just put what it is. Where the brand goes normally in the formula. So this would be like teddy bear plush. Or teddy bear and then I would put the inches. Plush. And then um, just tons of keywords. Uh, really good ones. Try to be as descriptive as possible. And try to put really, really good photographs. Make sure your front one's like super cute. And they'll still sell without a brand. I swear these trains only come by when I'm filming. Uh, it depends on the flip -a zoo So the different animals will sell for different prices or comp at different prices depending on the animal. Hey, Thrifty Space Queen, better late than never. I have a tiny flip -a zoo I might keep this one because guess what? What is that? What is that? Oh, I think that's a dragon. I thought it was a hippo. I was really excited. Okay, tell me at first glance that that does not look like a hippo. This is not a hippo. Because hippos don't have horns. And hippos don't have wings. And they definitely don't have scales. This must be a dragon. But I thought it was a hippo. Excuse me. And a dog. 
but yeah, the larger any any flip is there. You just gotta comp it because it depends on the animal. I think um, this isn't a velvety. This is Arctic. He's a polar bear. It's a hippo dragon. It did look like a hippo. I'm not. See, I'm not crazy. See, they thought it round and Amelia also. Everyone thought it was going to be a hippo. That looks like a little hippo face. I was really excited, you guys. I thought I had a new hippo. I got a toucan. This is... Ooh, his tag is so faded. I could tell you that this is really vintage. It says Acme. Acme is really a vintage company, but I mean, that is like, I can barely read it myself. I don't know if I can even. So when I get tags that faded, what I'll try to do when I take the photos, I get a wee little piece of tape and roll it back on itself so both sides are sticky. And I'll tape it flat to the animal. And I'll take a close-up of it under the photo lights. Um, and sometimes then um, they'll come out real clear like that. See? So when you put in your eBay listing, it's real faint. And you can tell it's real faded. But you can read what's on the tag. And then you can put in your listing, you can disclose, you know, this is a vintage animal. The tag is very, 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 very faded. Um, but you can still read what's on it to show the buyer that it is an Acme tag and it is vintage. Hey, Della, welcome in. Better late than never. It's a hippo that wants to be a dragon. <laughs> Maybe it's a, it's a, a drippo. <laughs> um... That's a good question, Nadia, because I haven't not had a store since time before time before ancient times. It's been a long time. Actually, I don't think I don't think I've I've personally ever been doing this since it wasn't a store. Um, I think since I've come aboard to help Keith, it's always been a store. I don't think it's been that's a good question. Does anybody know the answer to that? Can you do that without a store? I know you have to be on the seller hub to do it, but uh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, so let me, let me just, here, real quick. I don't have very many animals left. So let me show you real quick. I'll show you what it looks like and then um, how to do it. And then um, you could tell me from there if this is a screen you get without a store or not. So uh, I have to be in this screen to share. Share screen. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. Okay. So when you go to your overview, um, if you don't have a store, I don't know if you can see the seller hub here, but you should have under suggested actions. Look at these recommend. This is gross. I'm not doing those by the way, because if they're not uh, required, I'm not touching them. I don't care. So listings eligible to send offers. So this says three because I do them several times a day, but usually in the morning when I wake up, there's like 20, 30, sometimes 50. There's a lot. So I go here up here, you just do that. Under next to actions, you click that box. So you check all the way down. And then you click send offers and you can put in the percentage you want. I do 10. And then you can allow counter offers or not. So you can allow them to counter your offer to them or you can turn it off so that they cannot. You send offers. Voila. Done. And then you send them out like that. So that's how you do it and what it looks like. But I don't know if you can do it without a store. Um, yeah, I had to learn that the hard way. 
tags. Because I don't uh, be careful with the lighting because that can blind it too. Um, this is a frontier beanie bear. Um, she's apparently a bowler in a league called. I almost said Ball Nova. I don't know what it says. But she's a bowler. And she's a bear. And she's got a cute bow on her head. And she's cute. That is a cute little bear. This is a bear in a bag. I don't know why she's in a bag. She doesn't need to be in a bag. It's opened. Um, this is a mini... Yes, I just rolled my eyes. <laughs> this is one of the Beanie Babies you'll see. Uh, going for millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars, guys. I'm rich. I can retire. Debbie Whitehead. Double check that your bell still um, check mark, Debbie. Sometimes that, that goes off on its own. Just double check that you still have that click. Um... Hey, Broke Life Fifth, welcome in. Thanks for subscribing. Good to see you on the live show. Um, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, you should be because everyone in there also loves plush. Here's a link. All right, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe you from people too, just randomly. Like, for instance, I'm a moderator on Casey's channel. And so clearly I subscribe to his channel and I'll go on his live shows Thursday sometimes and I'll be like, why am I unsubscribed from him? It happens. So you just got to double check that you're still subscribed and your bell is still um, marked on people that you like to follow because it will happen. This is um, a little scary. I don't know what. <laughs> this is a little creepy, guys. Doesn't that look like something from a nightmare? This looks like something from Five Nights at Freddy's, except scarier, like freakier. I'm a scary panda bear. I'm in horror movies. Okay, he's going over there because that is clearly homemade and knitted and you know. No. No. All right, we have another beanie baby named Iggy that I'm going to be able to sell. For approximately $1.5 million. And I'm going to retire. Oh, thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. That's so nice of you. Look, a bully, another, another bowling bear. Another bowling bear. Cool. And this is a duck. Oh, another beanie baby. This is Quackers. This one's worth $2.3 million. Y'all, I ain't even moving to Florida. I'm buying my own island in the Bahamas, and I'm going to retire off my three Beanie Babies. <laughs> if you guys aren't sure, I'm being very sarcastic. If you're new to the channel, the Beanie Babies really aren't worth anything. I'm just joking around. I should, I should be very clear. If you aren't sure... I'm being very sarcastic and I'm just making a joke, okay? Comp your stuff. <laughs> Walt Disney World. This is cool. Fantasia Disney. Mickey Mouse. We've sold a couple of these before. We've had big ins. We've had little ins. They're not as exciting or worth as much as you think. Um, but they're still good bread and butter. They go for anywhere from 15 to 30, depending on the size and the condition of your particular Fantasia Mickey Mouse. <laughs> they clearly struggled with that one. Um, I can't say that word. Amigurumi? I have a crocheted Baby Yoda. You guys may or may not have seen. Let me grab him real quick. Just real quick. La, 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 la. He's cute. Keith's sister actually made this for me at the beginning of the craze. 
when the Mandalorian first came out in December 2019, before they had all the merchandise available, which I have tons of now, but before you could find anything, um, Christmas, December 2019, she made this for me. He's even got his three little toes. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Keith's sister made that for me. Now, that's a cute, um, I can't say it, a migurumi. I don't know. And they cute though. So plush um, on Poshmark. Not as well as it does like on eBay. It's new to Poshmark. It's a whole brand new market. I don't think people are used to it being on there yet. Um, it sells. But you have to list it every day. You have to share it. You have to do your offers. It doesn't do as well as the clothing. But again, I think it's because it's only been recently that they've allowed it to be on there and it's a new market and their buyers aren't really on there looking to buy plush or looking for plush because it's a new market. You know what I mean? I'm down to the bottom of the bag in case you wonder why I'm like, oh, there's one, dude. Nope, there's still two more dudes. Let me get them. Um, there are folks who say that they do well on Macari, and I say good. That's that's fantastic for them. I think Macari is. Um, I list on it, and we sold a Halloween Pokemon Pikachu on there in October, and we haven't sold anything since. And um, I list on there every day. I use list perfectly, so it's not really technically a waste of time because um, I do bulk listing with list perfectly. I can open five tabs in 30 seconds, and then it takes me another two minutes to do the five listings a day, and I send out offers. So I spend like two, maybe three minutes a day on Macari listing and sending out offers. Um, but I've sold one plush since October on there and I've got good plush I've got you know I've got you know giant Disney store um the, the panther from the jungle book I've got um I got collector plush I've got good plush I've got lots of video game and Pikachu's because a lot of people tell me, well, you just don't have the right plush. No, I do. <laughs> I do. I just don't do well on Macari and I'm active. I list every day. I send out offers. Um, we just don't see any activity on there. It's very, very slow. Um, this is my third try on it. The first time we tried Macari, we did all novelty ties and like novelty t-shirts because someone told us those did well. Then we did electronics. We've just never done really well on that platform. Very, very slow. Very, very slow. But some people say they do well on it, so I don't know. Um, isn't he just the cutest? Mm. Yeah, there you go, Nadia. So easy. So you can do it a couple times a day, and you can just send them all at once. Um Of course, you kept the owl. The owls. The, every time I see an owl, I think of you, by the way. Probably, like, you see hippos and you think of me. Um, see, that's what everyone says. But I have, like, rare, not rare, but I have more obscure characters that are harder to find that aren't oversaturated by, like, the Pokemon Center. They don't move. They don't move. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't like Macari. I think it's a waste. Of, if I didn't have List Perfectly and I couldn't list in bulk, I would shit can, I mean, yeah, I would shit can Macari. Let's just say it like it is. I think it's a waste of time um, for me because nothing ever moves over there. Nothing ever moves over there. It doesn't matter what I do. But I keep trying. Um, that's Aurora. Aurora is a pretty good, decent bread and butter company. This is a monkey. I'm going to try to go fast now because we're closing in on an hour. Um, this is a Tender Heart Treasures. 
it's just a little tiny bear with reindeer antlers and a little Rudolph nose. A little um, Mike Waskowski. I was trying to see if this is Monsters, Inc. or Monsters University. And it, I believe that's Monsters University. Little backpack clip. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, I love when this happens because I could take one photograph and make one listing and say two available. Boop. That's awesome. I have an Olaf. Um, Disney. Ty. He's oversaturated anymore. Um, Tracker. Paw Patrol. I'm excited about him because he's an obscure Paw Patrol character. I talk about Paw Patrol all the time. I do so well with all the Paw Patrol characters, but the ones that aren't as common typically um, sell for more money and sell a lot faster than like Chase and Marshall and all them. This one is Tracker, so I'm super excited to get Tracker. This is like Mickey Mouse. He works. But darn it if his tags aren't cut off. Darn it. Hey, Diane. Yep, you're coming in right at the tail end. Um, I got two more guys to show you. Pop Troll. Yep, he's cute, too. Look at his little face. These guys are all cute. All right, this is a bear by, oh, I love Gund. Love Gund. Gotta get Gund. This is a, he's got a scarf. He's a really good size, too. And last but not least, we have a Build-A-Bear workshop. Happy birthday. Bear with little confettis on his feet and everything. He's cute. I'm going to cop him because I haven't had one like this. Um, the plain ones I always just put up for like 18. I don't even bother comping them. But I'm going to comp him. And if he comps in at less than that, I'm going to put him up for 18 anyway. Because that's what I do. <laughs> I don't like to sell Build-A-Bear for less than 18 or 19. Um, and they usually sell for that for me. So... I mean, mine might take a little bit longer than the people selling them for less, but that's fine with me. I have time. I am here to run a business and not give stuff away for free, so that's fine with me. Um, why is he on the floor? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I was putting all my bunnies on the floor. Um, so, anyways, guys, that's the, all of the plush out of that bag this week. Um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave. It really helps the channel a lot. It helps the algorithm out. Um, make sure you are subscribed and hit the little bell so you're notified when I go live or put up other content on the channel. I'll be back this weekend to check in with you guys for the listing challenge that we're doing. Make sure you're in the Facebook group so you can participate in that and learn more about Plush. Um, Go be productive, guys. Go have a good weekend. Make sure you take some time for yourself this weekend. That's super important. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching, for joining me, and participating in the chat in the live section here. And if you're watching at a later time, if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching. You guys are the best. Bye.